everyone welcome back to adobe live i'm jack and we are back again today with branding and identity designer sarah rose this is part two you can find the replay here on behance for part one if you're over on youtube come over to behance you can find us at be.net slash adobe live that's where we've been chatting answering questions um asking the chat questions we even had the client jacqueline in the chat yesterday i see jacqueline southern vintage photography here again today nice to see you so say hi and let us know where you're joining from. Right, right before us today was the creative encore of the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge with Andrew Hawkbrattle at 11.30 a.m. Pacific time. Sarah will be continuing work branding for a web wedding photographer today. Sarah, let us know a little bit about yourself and uh, where we left off and what we'll be working on today. Hey guys. Yes, my name is Sarah Rose Neary. I'm the owner of Sarah Rose Inc. I'm so excited to be here today and for you guys to join us as we work on designing a, a very elegant and romantic wedding photography brand. Um, we are very lucky to have my client in the chat. So she's going to be providing some live feedback as we are designing. Um, and I just kind of wanted to give you guys a brief introduction to who I am, some of my previous work, and then we're going to jump right into uh, where we left off yesterday. So um, Sarah Rose Inc. is a high-end luxury brand and website design firm. Um, we specialize in interior designers, but we also do work occasionally with other clients um, that we feel very connected with and we uh, feel that we can really bring their vision to life. Um, generally, they are very aesthetically pleasing brands um, that are very visually creative as well, um, like Southern Vintage Photography. Um, as you guys will see in the designs today, um, <laughs> like our work just really goes together perfectly. So. Um, yeah, as you guys can see on the screen, this is just some examples of our recent work within the past year. Um, we've done everything from interior design, um, working on a really fun furniture brand that is going to be coming to High Point Market, um, working with a fashion and interiors brand. So we really run the gamut with what we do, but we are so passionate about the brands that we work with. So let's go ahead and get started with where we left off yesterday. So you guys can kind of um, get a feel for that if you weren't able to join in yesterday. And then we're gonna get started today with doing some, a little bit of tweaking and refinement. And then we're going to jump into really building out this brand, getting into some pattern design and mock-ups um, and really bringing this brand to life. So I hope you're excited. Um, let's go ahead and get started. All right. So this is kind of where we left off yesterday. Um, we went through and explored, um, we started with some font exploration, narrowed those fonts down to our favorites. Um, and we really focused on modern serif fonts. And there was one font that really caught my eye and this was this um, beautiful script font. And I kind of wanted to explore how that might look with combining it with a more clean modern serif. And we did come up with this beautiful um, primary logo by combining um, that uh, um, <laughs> script font with a more toned down modern serif, which um, this font is called Classico. And Classico is the script, correct? Classico is this um, is the the main font for 
It's okay. not the script. It's, okay, so it's, it's the serif. like Gotcha. Yeah, it's the serif. And we went through and we created a primary font, a secondary, or not a primary font, a primary logo, a secondary logo. And we did create an icon. Um, I did do some work on this last night. So uh, if you guys tuned in yesterday, I was working with a puppet tool and really trying to get like these perfect lines um, to go how I wanted them. And I was able to really refine this last night. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, like this P like perfectly goes right into the H um, and through the O. And I think that just really like adds so much. Um, and then I really refined this V um, arch here. Um, it was kind of wonky yesterday, but I didn't want to like agonize yeah. over this on the live with everyone. Did you um, adjust that? the loop that goes underneath the V as well? Yes, I did. Yeah, so um, really just kind of refining and making it look perfect um, how I want. Um, and we're gonna do a little bit more tweaking on that today. And I also refined this um, icon. So where we left off yesterday, we created this version of it, but I really, it wasn't feeling right. So I went back and revised it, um, still with the cutouts using the shape builder tool that we learned yesterday. Um, I'm so glad that you, uh, <laughs> stuck with it. And, uh... yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I just, um, I, th I think I like this version a lot better. It feels, um, very elevated and elegant. I like um, the oval that you added as well to kind of frame it. Yeah, I just feel like this, this is kind of the direction I was wanting to go. Um, still may do some eventual refinement, but I like where it is now. And then this is our secondary logo that we came up with. Um, this is a beautiful font from the Adobe fonts called Golden Book. Um, and we did some topography manipulation and created some custom um, letter forms and even added this beautiful, just little accent of this dot here that I thought really just kind of topped it off. Yeah, um, I really, we loved that dot. Just yeah, <laughs> it's just a touch. Um, I don't like to do too much with my brands because I always want them to feel classic and timeless, and I don't ever want them. I never would want somebody to say, oh, that brand looks like it was designed in 2022. Like that is never my right. goal. It, I always want it to be um, timeless. Fergie um, is saying glam and elegant yet hitting at traditional. So I think you hit the nail on the head with that one. Yay. What do you guys think of these? Um, I'm curious to know which one you are feeling the most. Um, cause I will let you know which one the client with, went with in just a second, but, um, yeah, let me know in the chat, which one you guys are feeling the most as I'm going through these. Yeah. Be curious um, it, to know. Yeah. And then I created this, um, secondary variation and we created this gorgeous icon for, um, this version, I did tweak this a little bit last night. I made this P a little bit wider and just adjusted it because it felt a little unbalanced. Um, so I just made some minor tweaks with that as well last night. So that's kind of where we left off. Um, curious to know in the chat what you guys think, which um, logo version is your favorite and which one you think the client is going to go with. And we uh, also Val saying hard to choose. They're also good. Fergie saying tough choice. So I think so they're also having that. a hard time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a hard choice. Um, so last night I sent over some of these to the client so she could choose which one she liked. Um, and so as you can see, we've kind of got the same exact picture, but just with each logo variation. Mm -hmm. So um, I think honestly, like both of them are good. Yeah. Like they both truly work. Um, 
and it's it's definitely a hard decision but the client did end up really liking the one that i liked the most which is this first one the first one yeah with the script font there mm -hmm. so we're going to be working on really refining this first logo version and um, then mocking it up bringing it to life um, putting it on some different like business cards um, we want to do some social media templates because Jacqueline always um, does some announcements with like whenever she gets a new um, bride and groom that they're going to be photographing so we want to do some like insta story announcements um, we're just going to be mocking up a lot of different things that she can use throughout her brand and see how we can bring these to life very now, cool. Yeah. Do you typically work in um, Illustrator to do all of your mock-ups and Photoshop when you typically do that kind of work? Um, I typically do all of my like work work in Illustrator. So um, I create like all the different artboards of how I want each mock-up to look and then I export them into um, into Photoshop to mock them up like in a prettier form, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I kind of just plan out how I want them to look in Illustrator and then mock them up in Photoshop. And then I present them um, generally in an InDesign document to the client. So using three different <laughs> Adobe uh, um, platforms that, that are kind of my favorite. Yeah. Did Do you I use libraries those? at all um, to, you know, trans transition your, take your assets from one to the other? No. How, oh. how would I do that? Well, you can actually, um, if you open up the libraries window, you can add your logos and um, your assets to a library. And then um, when you go into Photoshop or InDesign, you can actually just pull them in using that library. And there's two different ways you can do that, either as a linked or uh, like a, a placed, you know, editable um, file. So is that uh, here? You, yeah. So you've got, nope, that's not it. Go into your window at the top, like your Windows menu in the oh, top gotcha. toolbar. Yep. And you go down to libraries. Mm -hmm. And that's going to open up your libraries panel. And you might need to give it a second. And you can create a new library, just scroll down or expand that window to get rid of that. Yeah, there we go. Create a new one. You can name it like Southern uh, Vintage Photography and say create. Mm -hmm. And then you can select, um, select one of your logos that you want to use. Okay. And just at the bottom there, there's a little plus in the libraries window. And mm -hmm. if you click that, you're going to get probably a couple different options. You want to, you can either bring in the color as like a color swatch, the graphic. And then um, if you had some type, like just uh, editable type, you could actually bring the character style in, but you want to bring it in as a graphic. So select that. Okay. And now it's added oh. it in. So you could add all of your um, logos and all of your assets in that way. And then when you go over to Photoshop or InDesign, um, you can use libraries to pull them in. And the nice thing is if you use like the um, place a, a linked copy, if you go into your um, and you edit that library asset, it'll update wherever that, you know, across all of the places where that asset is placed, if that makes sense. Okay. Pretty handy. That's mm -hmm. awesome. This one, it didn't bring in, do I need to select? How do I select um, everything you, on that? Yeah, artboard? select select all. Just if you drag, it should you should be able to select everything. Just drag and select. There you go. Oh, now gotcha. try adding it, and it should bring everything in. There yeah. we go. That's you can awesome. also um, right click on those where it says like R four two, um, and you can rename those. Um, oh, cool files. The other thing that you can do, which is super handy with libraries, is you can actually share this with clients. I've done this before. If up in the top where you see that little uh, person avatar icon with the plus, mm -hmm. you had Jacqueline's email address. You don't have to do it obviously right now, <laughs> but you can add Jacqueline to that library 
and uh-huh. um, they can actually go in and like download those assets themselves as like PNGs, JPEGs, and I think EPS files to so they don't have to like go through you every time they need something. It's pretty cool. Oh my gosh! Wow, <laughs> that's awesome. Yes, I I am learning so much. <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah, you can also use libraries with the new um, Creative Cloud Express app um, to put together, like you were talking about social media templates. There was a stream earlier today with Phil Palin um, working with Creative Cloud Express, actually working with a library as well, a branding, a library, a branding library that Phil created for himself to create Instagram stories. So all kinds oh, of new wow. stuff to check out. That is so cool. Thank you for telling me that. I feel like I spend so much time like exporting oh, yeah. the web, saving it, uh-huh. then transporting it to something yeah, else. Yeah, they're super handy for that kind of stuff. I, that's why yeah. I started using them for like branding clients because it's like every single time you make a change, you have to export all of these file types and stuff. And sharing yeah. the library with clients, they can kind of like self-serve and get their files, you know, without you having to that email is things. And So cool. I love it. Thanks, Jack. Sure. Everybody's commenting like Friggy libraries are the best. Val loves libraries. Chris has all the pro tips. <laughs> <laughs> I'm late to the game, guys. <laughs> I'm the only one that doesn't know, but now no, I know. No worries. So, yeah. Um, so Lucorn last- said, yeah, I only just recently started working with libraries. So you're, you're not alone. I think they're okay. still pretty new. Okay. Well, I'm not too late to the game, but I'm (laughs) sure somebody else that's watching this has not heard of them. And so now we can both learn together. (laughs) Um, So what I also like to do for clients is kind of like how I was talking about yesterday, um, like how if the client had chosen this um, particular um, option, with the little dot, we want to have more than just the logo to build this brand out. We want to have other recognizable elements that people identify with this brand. Um, And so what I did last night is I wanted to kind of determine and create some other assets um, that we can use when building out this brand. And stalking Jacqueline's um, Instagram page, uh, I found this beautiful photo she had taken. And I just fell in love with like this particular little icon on this fireplace. Yeah. And so um, I was already kind of gravitating towards um, doing like a, an oval. Um, but I really felt like this was an elevated version. So I went ahead and created this little icon. Um, so we can use that in different ways throughout her brand. And then I also wanted to create some delicate patterns because if you guys remember, um, her, her original branding, Um, Let me bring this up, especially for people that weren't here yesterday. Mm -hmm. Um, Her original branding had some flowers in it, um, but they just weren't, were not elevated. And so I wanted to create some flowers that I felt really kind of aligned with where we're taking her brand now. Um, And so I actually went in and hand created these custom illustrations here. Oh, those mag- are so cool. Things of magnolias, <laughs> yes. um, which are very traditionally Southern. And mm-hmm. so I really wanted to like have this be an additional element we can use with her brand. So um, we can either use them like separately or um, like I even created a little pattern nice. with this. I love the like how you've just taken an element from the previous iteration of the brand and kind of like elevated it and made it fit with the um, like timeless kind of look and feel that you're going for with the the new brand. Yeah. So with a rebrand, like I never want to just completely um, lose what they have before because Um, you know, she has a lot of clients that love her and, 
um, recognize her current branding. So we're just wanting to elevate it and take it to where it's going to go in the future. Oh yeah, um, that looks gorgeous with the lock up there. Yeah, so this is like one little version. Like this might be a perfect social media. Um, oh yeah, I can little, totally see that. Little um, profile picture. Mm -hmm. um, we could also use like this type of um, little kind of seal or crest, maybe even at the bottom of a website. Um, so like on the footer, um, we could just use this in so many different ways across her branding. And I like to give clients more than one option than just like, just these traditional, like primary logo, secondary, logo, you know, mm -hmm. so they have a lot of variety and ways to bring their brand to life. So what we were going to do today is, um, I kind of want to create a pattern from this guy, um, and see how that might look. And then let's start like putting some of this stuff together and mocking it up and see, see how it looks. What are your guys' thoughts on what we've got going on so far? Are you liking it? Do you have any suggestions or um, ideas for where we might go with this? Yeah, let us know what let you guys know. think so far. Of the I'm seeing a lot of everybody loves the flowers. Katarina says, oh my, that is stunning. Uh, Valerie is saying, absolutely beautiful. Willow Design Studio, those flowers are gorgeous. Chris Olson, hey Chris. Chris is saying, lovely flower illustrations. Christelle's back, beautiful flowers. Everybody loves the flowers. The flowers are like the big winner today. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, also... I want to let everybody know that we've got an artist spotlight today about an hour and a half into the stream. We're going to be taking a look at um, an artist uh, from the community. If you would like to submit um, either yourself or somebody whose work you really like, um, please go ahead and click on that artist spotlight tab right above the chat and you can submit um, an artist there. There'll be a link for all of that. Okay, so I am just going through and seeing how that little icon that I took from the um, fireplace might look as a potential pattern. So I love creating patterns for brands and because there's so many different ways they can use this, like tissue paper. Um, this can be backgrounds on their website. Um, it's just so many beautiful ways to use assets like these. Annika is asking, what is the most challenging part of branding an identity, if any, uh, during the whole process and how, how do you deal with it? Um, Hmm. That's a good question. I think I would say the most challenging part is just making sure that like the decisions I'm making are truly, um, impactful and that like the client and I are aligned in, mm -hmm. in what we're, we're doing. So, like, it's always such a good feeling when the client is like, oh my gosh, I love it. You know, like you understand where I'm trying to go. Um, if the client is just not able to give like good feedback and they're just like, I just don't like it, but they can't mm -hmm. tell you why, yeah. that's always very difficult because you could sit there and do iterations for ever and <laughs> It's yeah. like, uh, you could literally be doing that until you're blue in the face. So, um, really like taking the time if a client, if I do more than two revisions for a client, um, I will have a, a call with them and say like, yeah. okay, let's reconvene. <laughs> let's put together another like mood board. Um, let's really kind of narrow down like what it is you don't like, what it is you think won't like, um, connect with your ideal audience um, so that we can make sure that we aren't just sitting here and like 
doing iterations until we're blue in the face type of thing. Yeah. So <laughs> it's always tricky with when you have a client that's like not, it's always nice to have a client, I guess, that is like has a very clear vision for what they want. It gets tricky when um, somebody's yeah. like not really sure. Um, so I guess to kind of piggyback on that question, um, I know that this is a, a rebrand, but um, how does your process start or does it change at all when you're working with like uh, a new brand or, you know, a brand new kind of like a startup or something like that? Um, I pretty much have the same process like across the board. So um, I do brand strategy with all my clients because I feel like without it, we really aren't going to achieve the um the results that you are likely looking for. Like, you know, brands aren't just trying to um, do a rebrand or create a brand just for the heck of it. Like th they want to have a certain outcome and that outcome is generally more clients. <laughs> um, so we don't want to just like, um, I don't want to just um, be designing just to design. Um, so we start with strategy for everyone to make sure that we're going to really hit those numbers that are meaningful for them. Um, and then from there, everything is really clearly laid out for what we need to do moving forward. Um, because we've got the creative vision determined, we've got um, our goals understood, we're in alignment on what look and feel we want. So really like after brand strategy, everything else becomes a lot easier. Um, so if you aren't doing brand strategy, I would highly recommend doing that because um, it's really like, it's a huge game changer for, um, you know, getting clients on board and really getting the results that they need with, you know, choosing to use you um, or your business. Yeah, it's so easy as, uh, you know, creatives to want to jump right into the visuals, but it's mm -hmm. really important to kind of nail down some of those details right at the beginning um, so that you can really, that really informs your whole process, right? We kind of went over that yesterday um, and like how that informs the decisions that you make from, you know, the mood board um, on essentially. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, it really does. Um, and Sarah, you have a background in business, so that gives you a little bit of a, a advantage in that side of things. Yeah, I think it really helps because honestly, like um, being able to speak the the language of business with business owners is very helpful for. Um, like making making a case for what you're doing um if you're just like oh well i just thought this font looked pretty or something like that um they're they're less likely to um agree with you than if you're like well you know i did um you know market research and actually this font will give you an roi because of xyz and and then they're like oh well, okay, now that you said it that way. Um, so it's really about being able to understand what, what is meaningful to them um, because most business owners are not creatives. <laughs> they are just interested in running their business, so. Yeah, and ROI stands for return on investment. So if anybody is not familiar with the term in the chat. Yes. So, so what are we working on right now? What I'm doing right now is um, Jacqueline always does a really beautiful, um, that does not need to be in caps. Um, she always does a really beautiful um, announcement for when she gets new um, clients that are joining her, that are going to be um, like clients in the future. So like whenever somebody joins um, the Southern Vintage family and they're gonna be, you know, a wedding client. She always makes an announcement on her social media Instagram. So what I'm doing is kind of revisioning what this could look like for her with this new brand. So 
Um, that's kind of what we're doing here. Really smart idea there to use that kind of color block there to separate the text from the pattern and have it kind of peeking through. Thanks. So this Becca, is kind of, oh, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> Becca is asking any suggestions for finding new ideas and inspiration so that each brand really stands out from each other. Yeah, so that's going to be um, in your brand strategy. <laughs> uh, I hate to like keep harping on that, but like, like for example, the reason I chose these fonts and the reason I chose like this direction is because um, let me pull up. Um, I think Becca, yeah, you we were here. That again. Yeah, Becca, you were here yesterday, I think. But um, like we've determined with with the client that the tone that we want for this brand is elegance with Southern grace, um, a romantic feel. It needs to feel formal. So right now she kind of determined that her brand feels cute and we don't want it to feel cute. We want it to feel elevated. We want it to feel elegant um formal <laughs> and so that is driving a lot of these decisions so for example like um script font is a more formal elegant um font you know it's very traditional um so that's like what is driving my design decisions so for example if if i had another client i mean almost more than likely they're they're not going to have the same requirements um and we're not going to come up with the same um oops sorry uh we're not going to come up with the same um tone for every single client um and also like our our um mood board that we create which is over here um is always going to have a different look and feel so you know like this client has a very airy um light beautiful like dreamlike um look and feel so we want the branding to match that and all the decisions need to go along with this agreed upon visual inspiration so you know as far as like making them all look different they all are going to look different because the brand owners that are behind these brands all have a different vision and um you know, we're, we're determining a lot of these big, um, like, uh, like, like, um, brand like drivers ahead of time. So like the visual inspiration is driving a lot of this, these decisions, the tone is driving it. So, you know, even if I had another, um, Southern photography client, their visual inspiration is going to be different. Their tone is going to be different. Their needs are going to be different. Their goals are likely going to be different. So they're the decisions I would make to achieve those goals and to achieve that, that um, look and feel is going to be totally different. So the outcome is never going to look the same. Um, I hope that answers the question, but it, it basically just comes down to like, everything I do is so custom. So it would be, I mean, I don't know. It would be like impossible for it to look yeah. the same because it's a different client. You're, with you're focused on making, designing a brand that fits the client. And so you're not, you're not necessarily worried about, you know, whether or not it's, um, you're not necessarily trying to copy something that already exists. You're making something that fits the specific oh, no. brand. Absolutely. Copying. We're not copying. We right. are. No, right. no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. We don't, we aren't doing that at all. Um, we want this to feel very um, unique to them because this is how we want them to stand out also. So you can't stand out if you look mm -hmm. like another brand, especially like in the same field as you so that's what the clients are paying me for <laughs> val saying elegance with southern grace is exactly what you've designed well done and yes Chris christelle says yes you totally succeeded 
Oh, thank you guys. So let's grab this little guy. And then I want to try and design. Um, how are we doing on time, Jack? Oh, we're doing great. It's we're like a half an hour in. So. Okay. Plenty um, of time. I want to design some business cards and then um, also possibly do, um, I really wanna do an idea of what her website might look like. Oh, very cool. And yeah. then you're gonna do that in um, Illustrator as well? Yep. <laughs> George is saying, hello, Sarah, happy to see you and creative work. Oh, hi, George, thank you so much. Uh, George, what do you, um, do you have a niche or a specialty that you work on? Yeah, let us know. Let me know. So I know that yesterday we spent a lot of time working just on, uh, in like black and white, essentially working through the different concepts. Is that typically how you would start or when do you start to incorporate color? Yes. So for the the icon, um, for the logos and icons, pretty much everything at the beginning, I only design in black and white, even like this pattern was in black and white. Um, I do not add any color until I am like love the way it looks in black and white because, and this is also how I present to the client. Um, the reason I don't do color or add anything else until later is because um, even though this color is the client's color and it's agreed upon color, um, if, for example, I chose the color and the client didn't like the color, they might say they didn't like the logo just because they mm -hmm. don't like the color. So I present everything in black and white. Um, so they're just like just looking at the logo and the forms and everything like that before we're adding in any color that might influence them one way or another. If, if for example, they didn't like the color, they didn't like the photo I chose. Um, I don't want to add anything that is going to, um, distract, distract. Yeah. Until later on. So yeah, I think that's great advice. Yeah. <laughs> that's just how I do it. Um, what do you guys do? Let me know. <laughs> Purcell agrees. As Paula Shear says, if it works in black and white, it will work in any color. That's, yes, exactly. And who can argue with Paula? No one. <laughs> All right, so let's maybe do some business cards. And those are not the same size. Now, will you take these sort of, I know that we're just kind of putting these designs together, but would you take these uh, illustrator designs eventually and set them up for print? Yes. So um, that's what I do a lot is I create an illustrator and then um, depending on what it is, uh, like sometimes if it's really complicated, like if I need to send printer instructions, then I do it in design. So if I'm like, if it's really complicated, but if it's just like, if it's something as simple like this, then I would um, create it here and then send this to the client and they could print it. Um, but yeah, it just depends on what it is. Um, but yes, this is exactly what I would do. I love working in Illustrator, if you guys cannot tell. Um, Me too. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much only work in Illustrator. Very cool. Yeah, and yesterday we worked on some, you can see over in the lower left there, some uh, designs over the photos, which was nice. Do you, um, how do you balance the, you know, use of the brand over the photos? What do you mean by that? Um, like, how do you, I guess, make decisions about uh what very logo variations to use and like where to place them so that like the balance between like uh the logo and the focus on the photo isn't kind of 
lost, if that makes sense. Oh, like how do I choose just how I want this to look? Yeah, like how do you make decisions when you're using the logo over a photo? Yeah, so that's always interesting. Um, <laughs> I guess it's just kind of like by my eye and I mm -hmm. kind of just fiddle around with it. Um, for example, like this one, if I was going to, like if I was, we, we didn't really fiddle around with this one a lot, but like I would probably um, do something with this, either make this background a little bit darker so this stands out a little bit more or um, like maybe do an overlay or something like that with this icon because it doesn't stand out against this photo. So it's kind of just using like the design rules and making sure that like the focus is right. Um, you know, maybe I might even need to move it up or down. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. <laughs> no, I just kind of go totally with, fair. yeah, I just kind of go with like, what? Making sure that the photos, you know, the are appropriate. Guess, yeah. And yeah. that your logo stands out over top of them. Yes. So I'm trying to select this guy. Uh, there you go. Oh, so many groups. I know. <laughs> George like, say I'm working on Photoshop and Illustrator project to improve my design skills, to help myself become more assertive and create a creative person in the fourth industrial revolution. Oh my. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, That's George, awesome. if you haven't checked out the Photoshop and Illustrator challenges, I would definitely check those out. Great way to develop your skills in both programs. Yeah. And don't forget that we've got the artist spotlight coming up uh, about an hour, a little less than an hour from now. Um, if you would like to submit somebody to be uh, featured in the artist spotlight, there's a, a link you can click on right above the chat that'll open, you know, uh, a separate tab, tab over to the artist spotlight and you can submit um, yourself or, you know, somebody whose work you really admire to be featured during the other spotlight. Yes. Oh, uh, there's that tricky letter T again. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin says, I owe you coffee. I added a dot to my personal logo. Oh, yay! <laughs> Inspiring everybody. <laughs> That's awesome, Kevin. The dot is gonna is gonna become a thing. Can you can um can you guys share like uh, things in the chat or like, can you share photos or no? No, I don't think it, that um, any, they can share um, a photo. Oh, that the, sucks. I chat, wanted to see Kevin's logo. Kevin, you could always change your avatar on Behance to be your logo and then we'd be able to see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. I want to see what it looks like. So this is going to be like the the um, the front or the you know not information side of the, the yeah system. yeah yeah and I'm probably going to make this like really big mm -hmm. um, this pesky photography again yeah. tricky to figure out where to put it so it <laughs> <laughs> I did like how the bottom of the V kind of connected to photography, but you have to make it a lot smaller and that might make it difficult to read. Oh, you know, to like line it up with the other like text. with the P like here. Yeah. If you lined it up there, you'd have to make photography like smaller. So yeah. that it wasn't sticking out so far on the right, but yeah, that might make it really tiny. I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> Jacqueline's saying, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's not your fault, Jacqueline. These are design challenges. That, yep. Yep. We all have to deal with. Let's see. Viola says, sorry, super lurking. Work and lurk. Uh, what was the font again? Uh, are you talking about the 
the script or the serif. Maybe just mention both of them again. Yeah, the um, script font is Desirable Calligraphy. Um, it's a paid font. And then the um, the like main the main font in the in the logo is called Classico. And it's a great like modern serif. I love it. Yeah, I think Val shared uh, links to both of those up a little ways in the chat. If you guys wanna check it out. Nice and big. Yeah, I'm seeing if we can like really, what I wanna do is make this, um like embossed or debossed. Yeah, I was actually going to ask if that is something that you do with, um, you know, with printed um, things, I guess, business cards mm -hmm. and the like. I feel like it would work, that would work really well for this brand. Yeah. So we're going to mock this up and see how it looks. Um, are there any kind of special considerations you need to make when you uh, go to print something like that? Yes. So um, you want to, like, you would have to consider the, like, paper because um, it, it can show up on the other side. So um, I would pull up, like, Pinterest or something, but, like, you can see, for example, like you might see the reverse image of this, like on the other side of the card. So that's like a consideration you would have to think about. Um, that would and, be for like an M emboss where you're push pushing it into the paper. Yeah. 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 So you want to have like a thicker paper so that it didn't push all the way through exactly. or, be, or show through on the other side. Yeah, <laughs> don't want that. And then a, a deboss would be if it's raised off of the surface. Mm hmm. I'm going to probably do debossed for this. Are you thinking it's going to be kind of like offset off of the edge there or? Mm hmm. Yeah. I'm going to see how it looks. We'll mock it up and see. <laughs> and then we've got to do the information side. Yep. Would you go, would you, um, you know, get that information from the client uh, before putting together the mock-ups here? Like what, what sort of like, if they want a website on the card or um, particular people's kind of information or anything like that? Yes. Um, so that's like kind of in the initial like fact finding stage. Um, so we would want to know like exactly um, like what information this client would want and like what number we want linked, all that kind of stuff, because um, and then like, if we were gonna get this printed for the client, I would send this over for her approval. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not just right. gonna be like randomly, uh, <laughs> like creating something. And then she's like, wait, um, that's not right. Um, like Jacqueline is about to get married. Um, Congratulations. So, yeah, so like, <laughs> uh, you know, what, what name does she want on her car? It's, you know, so these are all considerations that we would want to think about. Um, before. How does a wedding photographer pick a wedding photographer? <laughs> I think she's using her um, second shooter. So, oh, there you go. So yeah. So, <laughs> so she, so it's keeping in line with her, um, with her brand. <laughs> so she's sure that it's not going to look off brand and we'll see some of her we don't want to do too much of a sneak peek but um we'll see some of her wedding photos oh, when, in just a second um her bridal photos that were done by her um 
Fergie saying, imagine if the floral illustration, floral illustrations were fo foiled in gold or silver. That would be stunning. Or a subtle UV spot. Is that the right? Yeah. A UV spot is oh. like a, a glossy yeah. kind of finish. Yeah, we can definitely do that. But yeah, I think that, uh, I think gold in particular would complement the color, the colors in this, the uh, green yeah so we haven't added any color to this but um i think we definitely should think about that because i don't want to just do these in black and white jacqueline is saying thanks you can put clark clark <laughs> Yay, Always nice to have the client in the chat so that they can tell you what they want on the cards <laughs> <laughs> Jacqueline saying, my associate photographer shot my bridal portraits, but I am letting her enjoy the wedding. I have her backup shooting my wedding. Oh, yay. Yeah, if this was um, in like gold foil, yeah. this would be gorgeous. Great suggestion, Fergie. Yeah, I'm liking that a lot. We might want to do like a darker color here. Um, we can mock that up though. You mean for like the the back the background on the card? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Liking those so far. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's go into creating possible web page, and then we'll we're gonna start. Um, doing some mock-ups and you'll be doing those in photoshop yep so how do you pick like a good size for doing like the the um the website kind of design <laughs> that's a good question <laughs> i just i just eyeball it honestly and then if i go to into the photoshop mock-up and it's the wrong mm -hmm. size then i'll come back and tweak it <laughs> I just kind of like eyeball and guess sizes for things. Uh, I don't know if that's the best way. If you have a better way, let me know. <laughs> but that's what I do. Well, I think it would depend on, I would probably go and and look at the tool you're using because you're using a, a specific tool to to actually build the sites. So, correct? Yeah. 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 So I would, I would kind of take a look at what, their sizes and, and breakpoints are for the site and, and use that as a starting point. But I mean, you do you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's fun. It's fun to live on the edge sometimes. <laughs> so here are some of Jacqueline's gorgeous uh, bridal photos that she is gracious enough to let us use uh, for the stream. So I'm going to mock some things up and see what we come up with. Yeah, and for a design like this, a website like this, because you've got such gorgeous photos to work with, you definitely want to like have them be large and and in the focus on the page. Yes, exactly. Yeah, her photography is the focus for sure of, of her website. Um, we are just highlighting um, her, her branding, you know, we, we want the brand to just accent her, her gorgeous work. All right. So let's do this in white. Oops. And, Sorry guys. Uh, Gal is saying, is that, pr am I pronouncing that correctly? Gal, let me, please let me know. Uh, saying, LOL, Sarah, I used to do it, but everyone has different ways to be fair. So like Jack said, do you, it's our way. So there you go. There we go. All right. You do you. Ooh, and that's a fun idea to use like the um, reversed out version of the logo. Yeah. We're just we're just playing. We're just seeing what we got going on here. Um, I want to use that oval that we kind of. Um, and I'm sorry that you guys, these pictures are so small because her work is just so stunning. <laughs> um, 
I wish there was a way to make this a little bigger, but you might will. be able to uh, in the settings up at the top, but I don't want to throw you off. Oh, <laughs> in the like, on that? the top on the left or yeah, right there. One of those. I don't remember which menu it is. Not that one. The other one. Try that. Oh, no, you've already got them large. There's a way. I don't know. Don't worry. There's a way, I think, to make them a little bit bigger. But OK. No big deal. I feel like they used to be bigger at one point in time, and I don't know what I did to make them smaller. <laughs> but it's probably not you. It probably, you know, the operating system updates. So <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna say it's not me. It's definitely um, Apple. <laughs> All right, so let's do like a little oval over this. Um, and Ga Gail is saying, I am definitely pronouncing it wrong, saying, yeah, Jack, no worries. If you're spelling my name in the wrong ways, my name is in Hebrew. It basically oh. comes, it comes from the word wave. Oh, pretty. Very cool. Let us know if, uh, if you can phonetically type it in the chat or give us like a, a similar word and might be able to get it. Fergie's saying maybe try to select one and try hitting space bar to get a preview. Yeah, I think you could do that in there as well, but no worries. Oh, to make the pictures bigger? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, Kevin is saying the same thing, but. So this is interesting. You're thinking you're, you're gonna like layer the photos on? Yeah, I'm just like playing because her photography is just so beautiful. I'm like playing around and seeing what we can do with it. Yeah, I mean, it's I like the idea of using like the black and white imagery and then having the color um, kind of over top. It could be really interesting. Yeah. Of course, none of this is like set in stone, but yeah, just experimenting right now, seeing where it takes us. Yeah. <laughs> and Southern Grace was one of the like keywords that we wanted to mm -hmm. stay with for her brand um, like vibe. Would you typically um, come up with some copy to put on the, a mock up like this? Yes. So that's another thing that I do with my clients um, that is a little bit um, different from some brand companies. Uh, I'm not sure that everyone does this, but um, I found I used to um, ask clients to give me copy and found that that was just very hard because they didn't know what to say. And it just ended up being very like the most difficult part so i started um implementing where we just do custom co copywriting for the client so everything is taken care of for them um so like yeah they don't have to worry about it we agree upon like the direction and the words they want to use and then from there everything is um, delivered to them on their website, like ready to go. So <laughs> that's something that like is a big pain point with a lot of websites. Um, so yeah. <laughs> it's also nice to give them like a little bit of an indication, even if it's not like the exact copy that they want, but to say like, this is what, you know, a starting point essentially. Yeah. So I'm kind of liking this direction um let's also do like an investment guide and then we'll we'll mock these up um jack how much time do i have we are an hour in so we've got um a half an hour until we do the artist spotlight and then we'll have a little bit of time after that right before we wrap up maybe like 15 minutes after okay cool if so that, that does um we're good then because the mock-ups won't take very much time. Now, All maybe right. you can explain what an investment guide is for everybody. Yeah, so um, my clients um, are, are generally service-based businesses. So um, especially like my interior design clients 
And um, Jacqueline being a elevated wedding photography client, um, they want to elevate their customer service experience. So they're not like, these are elite level clients that I have. These are not like, they're not just gonna send you a link to pay. Like we want to um, think about your brand experience, like from the first time somebody meet, reaches out to you all the way through. And so um, designing things like a beautiful um, client welcome magazine, an investment guide, um, you know, a, a brand, a fully branded experience is really important because your brand is not just the logo. It's not just um, your social media. It's truly like, like the full experience. And that's really what differentiates something from being luxury um, versus uh, just like off the shelf. So a luxury has more of that VIP level touch and feel. There's um, a lot more consideration and thoughtfulness in how the client experiences things and how you can make that experience even better. So it's not just about the price, it's it's more um, the level of detail um, and thoughtfulness that is going into every thing that that the client could touch or interact with your brand. So that's really why we're creating like all these different elements because um, the brand is not just the logo. It's like all these other little pieces and parts that truly creates a full experience and memorable um, on brand um, like luxury experience. So that's uh, the investment guide is something that like the is part of the client experience and it would go over like what services are involved, like how they work with you, the cost, all that kind of stuff, but just presented in a beautiful way rather than like, here's a, like a Google doc with right. our prices yeah. or here's a link with our prices. You know, we, we, we want to elevate the experience. So that's what we're doing. And uh, Gal is asking, Sarah, you're working with as a B2B or B2C, if that's okay that I'm asking. Oh yeah, of course that's okay. Um, I work with um, B2B most often. So um, like I work with other businesses and I mean, I guess they are consumers as well, but yeah, or but technically it's like business to business. So these clients that I work with most often already have an established brand. They already have, you know, a roster of clients and they're just looking to elevate from the point where they currently are. Um, so yeah, definitely B2B. How about you? How about you guys? Are you more B2B, B2C? Yeah, good question. Let us know in the chat gal saying this brand is beyond that i agree with your comment sarah i think maybe in really in regard to the like investment guy that you were talking about and and all of the different um i guess touch points that you're putting together and keeping everything on brand oh thank you yeah so are you thinking that that image that we kind of created on the left there for the site like that would be uh what somebody would initially see when they come to the site yeah so this would be like their like the main um like splash page or like hook mm -hmm. um and i usually kind of design that like just to give the client like a taste <laughs> of what their website could possibly look like uh, or what i'm thinking of the direction um and then like but when we get to the website design portion, it's much more involved than this. Um, this is more just like to see how the brand could live and what that might look like. Yep. Just kind of showing the general idea, right? Cause we're just, right now we're putting together the mock-ups, like you said, with the business cards and stuff like that. But you know, things might change when you go to the final print or something like that. Mm hmm exactly oh i like the idea of like using that oval to um capture those flowers there 
it's also kind of a call back to their original branding. Yeah. Gail says, used to do B2C, now I'm trying both. Oh, cool. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah, and just a reminder, um, if you're watching over on YouTube, to come on over to Behance, be.net slash Adobe Live. That's where we are answering all of these questions from everybody. And we've got the client in the chat, Black Jacqueline, which is so fun. Val's asking, what is your favorite part of the process and why? Um, part of this process? part. The yeah. 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 <laughs> like when, when I start to see everything kind of coming to life and, um, like see how this could like be realized and then also like present it to the client and see what their thoughts are. This is definitely my favorite. It's also nice because you've got all these elements that you've developed at this point and you can really play and, and, uh, play with all of them, I guess, and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Willow Design Studio works as B2B. Ooh. Nice. Gonna so add a lot of accent in there. Yeah, I'm thinking about seeing how that might look. It's almost like a sunburst too. Yeah. Very cool. And yes, we have the uh, artist spotlight in about a half an hour. Don't forget to submit if you want to. Yeah, guys. Be featured here on the stream. So where can we find this project when you finish it? I will be, um, after it's approved by the client, of course, I will be uploading this to Adobe um or Behance I'm sorry um and it will also probably live on my website and my portfolio so <laughs> yes this is a project for a real client so yeah can't wait to see how it comes together I don't like this guy so I'm gonna get rid of him That looks nice having the script kind of come over top of the photo a little bit there. Thanks. Just kind of feeling things out. So I don't think we touched on this. We might have a little bit briefly yesterday, but um, how did you or what what made you decide to transition from business to um, design, branding and identity? Oh, that we did not touch on that. That's a good question. Um, so I, I loved my clients when I was in, um, when I was an accountant, I worked, um, as a corporate auditor. So I would like fly out each week and go work, um, usually with like the C-suite. So I'd be working with like directly with the, um, CEOs, like the CFO, CTOs. Um, but, and I loved them, but like the, I did not, I do not fit the typical mold of an accountant. Um, even when I was like looking for, um, when I was, um, thinking about being, um, being an accountant and I was like interviewing, they were like, wow, you, you really are like the most friendly accountant that <laughs> we've ever like ever seen. And so, um, I really just didn't fit in with the culture and it was just very apparent, um, <laughs> as, as things got farther along, um, with me working there. So, uh, they wanted me to like fit into a box and kind of be quiet and like, just do like what I'm supposed to do. And like, that's just not me. Uh, as you guys can see, I'm way more creative and I like to, um, you know, explore and like be friendly and it just didn't work out. So, um, so yeah, so I transitioned to um, opening my own business and I've never looked back. Like this is definitely what I was meant to be doing. So 
I'm so grateful um, to have this ability and for my clients trust in me. And um, yeah, this is literally a dream job. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's a big, that's a big jump, but it totally makes sense for, I think, uh, you know, what you enjoy doing and yeah. Yeah. And I'm still able to use, um, you know, what I did there, but, mm -hmm. um, just in a different way, a more creative yeah. way. Certainly comes into play, um, from the stra brand strategy side of things. Yeah. So let's go ahead and look at mocking up some of, where did back up? Look at mocking up some of the business cards. Very cool. And see what that looks like. So uh, how do I pull in the library when I'm in? So you've got like a little libraries tab in um, Photoshop. It's if you go down oh, here, right there. Yeah. Okay. And it will load so you can now open that and it might take a minute to sync. Oh, there they are. And you oh, can cool. literally just drag and drop from there and it'll add oh. it. Yep. It's just going to create like a link. Oh, so now it's awesome. a, a linked asset essentially. Um, and if you go and you edit that in um, Illustrator and save it, it'll update in here as well, which is super cool. That's yeah, very cool. And it would work the same in, um, you know, in design as well. Okay. The libraries all kind of, it's a nice sort of like way to store everything. This is, and this is the- this Saves me so much time. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> well, I'm glad. I'm glad I could uh, bring you over to the library's side. side yeah. So this is for the business card? This is for the business card. So we're kind of seeing what this might look like. Um, oh, ooh. look at that. Fancy. Wow. <laughs> Very pretty. Yeah, so this would be the um, embossed version, it looks like. The text kind of pushed in. A debossed, yeah. We, we can look at embossed too and see how we feel about embossed instead oh gosh a hard choice <laughs> a hard choice guys um, yeah let us know which one you you guys like more which version yeah shamaya is here welcome uh like reverb mic mike is saying yeah they probably wanted a robot meaning the people were expecting a robotic accountant, I think. <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> they, they definitely did. Um, let's update this paper. Gail says that is nice, though. I'm not sure maybe it's hard to, to maybe decide. Oh, the second one. There we go. The Gal likes the second one. Re Reverb Mike says emboss like a boss. So <laughs> nice. Caroline says very nice embossing. Okay. So we're gonna stay with the embossed. Mm -hmm. I think that looks very nice. Um so let's save this guy. I do like it on the lighter paper. I think it works better with the um Yeah look and feel of the rest of the brand assets so I Val agree. saying the deboss and emboss looks so elegant totally oh it's hard to choose isn't it <laughs> <laughs> Uma Corrin says classy classy too yeah Chris, that's the feel we want for this brand is classy for sure Chris likes the emboss emboss is lovely Shamaya is new here. I'm, I normally watch on YouTube. Well, welcome. Glad you could Yay. join us. Welcome, Shamaya. Let us know if you have any questions. Yeah. So let's look at the back and see 
maybe about doing some gold foil. Ooh. And is this a template uh, mock-up that you put together? No, um, this is one that I purchased. Gotcha. Um, I don't know if we're allowed to say who we purchased them from, but uh, yeah, this is one that I purchased and I tend to use a lot just because um, I do use a lot of embossing and debossing in my work. Yeah. So um, makes sense. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it just really <laughs> fits with the clients. Val just wrote gold foil, yes, in all caps. Yay! <laughs> Let's see what it looks like, Val. Okay. Let's get some foil on here. So yeah, the um, different groups that are in this Photoshop file here have different um, effects on them, different like presets that yeah. are, um, creating the different like embossed epos and foil looks. Mm -hmm. So you could set them up um, yourself as well in Photoshop. Um, oh, know. I feel like that could be its own like. Oh yeah, it could be. Stream. Yeah. <laughs> um, earlier today, uh, Kaladi actually like the, not the stream right before us, but the one right before that was working on a pillow mock-up. Um, oh, wow. So you can totally, totally do that. Oh, that, that I just saw it sneaked a peek there with it with the card behind it. You like the bottom paper? I do. I think it helps it like Stand frame on the like we can see it on the card, like what it looks like. Yeah. I, I do like, like the gold. Yeah. It, it is getting a little bit lost in that. It upper is left. getting a little lost. I'm wondering if you can see? take down the lighting a bit. Oh, you have different ones. Yeah, let me Maybe see that if it's different. Look better. Yeah. Nope. Ooh, that's a little bit. Yeah. I wonder if there's like a blending mode on it, and that's why it's like lightening it. Uh, how would I find out about that? <laughs> um, if you go back to the. Ooh, I like it in silver. It's nice. I'm trying to see if there's like a link, if it's linked to something else in the file. The oh. silver looks nice. Yeah. Where would I go for that? I don't, it doesn't look like it is actually. So I'm not sure. Normally you'd see like a little line that connects it to like another like group of layers, but I'm not uh, seeing that. So it might not be, um, it might not have a blending mode on it actually. Okay. I might be wrong about that, but, but yeah, I think let's, the, let's change the color of the paper. Maybe because it's kind of like, getting washed out reverb mike is saying stay gold pony boy <laughs> fergie loves the foil look yay oh going with a darker darker version yeah i feel like it might stand out more Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. It stands out a lot more now. It does. I don't know if I like this top paper, though. Might get rid of that guy and just do on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So are you just kind of taking uh, Picking a color for the background that kind of fits with the the brand colors. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would of course go back and like truly modify this um, to make sure that we're on brand. Um, mm -hmm. But I think like I kind of like like actually let's pick pull from the original brand color. I just think we need a darker version of right. the brand color. So. Berkey is saying love uh, silver on the dark paper. So nice. Oops, sorry, guys. So just get a darker version. Maybe there. Yeah, that looks nice. Kind of keeps it 
Omrin. Fergie says, I need templates like that. Look how quickly it makes the process. Such a good tool method. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We yeah. could even do the first one in this color too. The um the front. The, yeah, the front of the card. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and something like this, um, when you've got the dark paper like that, you would definitely need a special like foil printing or something, a special ink to um, print on something that dark. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if you use the same background, you know, paper, you could use the same paper, you know, on both. Gotta find our layer there. Reverb Mike likes making templates. So there you go, Fergie. Just yeah, uh, just hire yeah, Reverb, get in touch Mike. With Reverb Mike to, <laughs> to create something. And Val's reminding us that we have about 10 minutes until the artist spotlight. So okay. um, then we'll Better. hop over to that. And then we'll have a little bit of time left to wrap up these mock-ups for today so if you want to uh don't forget to submit to the artist spotlight clicking that tab above the chat um, to submit yourself or someone else to be featured during the spotlight yeah val just said check out the tab above the chat for more details awesome oh so now we're looking through like some different kind of mock-ups there yeah, so we're going to do, I'm going to like mock these up in, um, on the computer. Mm -hmm. And then I want to do a mock up of the, um, the little announcement card too. So we'll just mock those up really fast. See, did you need to get it? You need to get. Jacqueline or you know another photographer to help you out and take some photos for you to use as mock-ups oh yeah that would be awesome yeah that would be really cool then you would have like your own your own branded yeah that'd be gorgeous And this one's gonna go on, I'm guessing there's like a, yeah, there we go, like a monitor so we can see what it looks yeah. like. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys can see that, but these are kind of the things I send to the client so that they can kind of feel like what their brand is gonna maybe look like. Um, so I think that looks really pretty. Um, yeah, and, and sometimes then... it can be difficult to envision what it's going to look like in the end. So stuff like this kind of helps them see it in you know the context mm -hmm. and then let's do the announcement this is a fun idea the announcement yeah normally this would go like on her social media but who says it can't be mocked up in real life <laughs> would you use something like indesign to do this for the final uh for the presentation yeah so like for example all of these photos that like this i would mm -hmm. download and then present in an indesign document for her so yeah <laughs> there's a lot that goes into creating these guys oh no he went away and Gal is saying, true, give them a direction somehow to feel how they're gonna their brand is gonna look. <laughs> yeah. That's why mock-ups are so helpful, Gal says. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Very cool. 
So like this one is clearly the wrong size for this mock-up. So this is one I would go back and fix. Yeah, adjust. Remember how yeah. you were like, how do you know <laughs> if these are the right uh -huh. size? I'm like, I don't, I just, <laughs> so like this one's the wrong size clearly, but we're just gonna go with it. You can fix all of that in the final. Exactly. Um, final files, so. Yeah. All right. I love how that little design element works between the um, the text at the bottom, between the date and the little like bit of copy. Yeah. It fits so, really nicely in there. So this is not, I would definitely go back and finagle with this, but you guys get yeah. the picture. Of... Yeah, definitely how that can look. Val saying mock-ups are a lifesaver. Reaver Mike is saying hopefully they won't be a runaway bride. Yikes. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully not <laughs> Reaver Mike. <laughs> that would not be good. Let's save this. Yeah, so I guess how would you then go about handing off that um, template to Jacqueline for the, um, particularly for the social media stuff? Would you would you put together, um, you know, each one with the their names and and the date and stuff like that, or would you give something to Jacqueline that she could put in that information herself? Oh, yes. For the social media one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, depending on what the client is used to, um, for social media ones, I create them in Illustrator and generally um, bring in all the elements into Canva so that it's gotcha. easy for them to use. Um, but like it, Jacqueline's pretty good with Adobe. So I mean, she might feel comfortable with Illustrator. So it just depends on what's going to be easiest for the client. But yeah. Um, I would just give her like the template and then um, generally put it in Canva so that she can use it easier. Um, and then like, are you talking about like, how would they get the files? Like, how do I give them the files? No, I was just curious as it sounds like they would get that template and be able to edit it themselves. I just meant yeah. for like the, yeah. the yeah. you know, cause they're gonna need to swap out the names and stuff like that for each one. Exactly. Yeah. And then, um, of course, like they would purchase the font mm -hmm. and everything. So everything works. Um, and I kind of walk my clients through like how to upload fonts into Canva. They're, they are taken care of. <laughs> like they don't, really don't have to worry about anything. Um, so I make it as easy as possible for them. I would definitely consider checking out uh, Creative Cloud Express, especially if Jacqueline has experience with adobe um yes with she those library um import from because you can use the assets from the library directly in there so okay yeah, let's mock up let's see if we can get um the business cards mocked up let's see what those might look like got a minute and a half let's do okay, it okay let's do it <laughs> We can do that, guys. It's not going to take long. <laughs> and there's time, of course, after the artist spotlight to come back oh, yeah. to it. So, and Jacqueline's saying, yes, I definitely will check that out. Yeah, Jacqueline, Jacqueline is really good. Um, a lot of clients, though, um, yeah, not so much, are not as like tech savvy as Jacqueline. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Let's see. To Jacqueline probably file. uses Adobe's to products to like do photo editing too. I'm guessing so. Yeah, she's in there all the time. And thanks, Val, for sharing links to the Creative Cloud Express YouTube and um, a link to find out more information. <laughs> Reverb Mike says, beat the clock. <laughs> so there's a little mock-up of what the front could look like. 
Let's do it in green and see, see how that might feel. That mock-up is really nice with the, like, the, like, plant on the table and stuff. Yeah. I think it goes really nice with her brand. <laughs> yeah, the colors. Yeah. Really this well. looks really pretty. Maybe when we come back from the artist spotlight, we can do the back and see what that will look like. Yep. Um, and we are right on time to switch over, so. Okay. Let's hop on over and check out who we're going to be spotlighting today. Sarah, are you going to switch over to... Oh, yes. Sorry. No, okay. I didn't know if I was waiting for, for you. Uh, yeah, nope. let me pull that up. All there right. we go. Yay. So um, this is another client of mine. We um, are in the process of rebranding for, for Jamie, but her work is just stunning. So I thought it would be fun to take a look at and see um, and show everyone um, her beautiful work and design and kind of go through that. So I don't know, Jack, if you want to kind of um, like comment or. Um... Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know. I took a peek through some of uh, Jamie's work, you know, a little bit earlier. Um, I really, really liked the, um, like how she shows different, like different aspects of this e space in each of these and how we're looking at like different, um, each one has like a set, I guess, that's showing off different features of the yeah. interiors, which is really nice. Um, including like some faraway shots to get like an overall feel of the space, but also like some close-ups on the the details. Similar to kind of what you do with branding, right? Like there's, you know, the overall brand, but there's all those little details that kind of get incorporated in to kind of make the space essentially. Yeah, I just love her aesthetic. Like she combines like very traditional elements, but um, she just does them in such a beautiful way. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's like such like clean lines. Um, I love the greenery. She always adds like some elements of greenery and like nature um, to all of her work. And I think that just adds so much life to the spaces. And they don't look too um, like pristine, you know, like mm -hmm. you couldn't live there. Like they yeah. look like you could... <laughs> Like you could just sink right in and just totally like love this space and and have like an amazing life there. Um, so I just love all of her her work so much. Yeah, it's similar to what we were talking about yesterday with like the mix of like the very like geometric architectural lines with like this yeah. throw rug, for example, or this throw on the. Um, on the couch feels very like natural. Yeah, and then like the geometric lines on this um, like dresser just add so much. And then against like a more, um, looks like a vintage like photo. It yeah. just, I love like how she layers things and her choices. Um, Definitely. Yeah, it's just so gorgeous. As, as, as I said, like, I just have to like love, I, well, I love interiors to begin with, but like I oodle over, I'm like, oh, I That's just That's such a good word, work. oodle. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I just feel like, um, I'm so inspired by, by my client's work. It's just so stunning. Yeah. Um, uh, Christelle saying beautiful images. Wu said, or, Wu. Val said, wow, in all caps. I like combine Val's name with what she said. <laughs> uh, Christelle says, the mood of the, these interiors is so pleasant. I love, love, love. Yeah. 
it's just so good like so good and again like it has that timeless feel it's not like you could say oh that house was redesigned in like 2022 like it has a very mm -hmm. like classic and timeless feel to it not it's not trendy um so i love that but she has her own like oh we already did this one oh no she has her own like clear style which is important yeah what is, yeah. what does everyone in the chat think are you guys like interiors fans like me uh what do, what do you guys think <laughs> about <laughs> y'all want to know where is it can i move in <laughs> exactly my thoughts exactly <laughs> uh Jamie? Val thinks the bathrooms are amazing yeah you know it's good when the bathroom looks good <laughs> exactly yeah Jamie works um out of Austin Texas but I'm sure she would love to travel <laughs> to design elsewhere yeah. if you guys are interested so yeah she her work is just like, I love kind of like how you said, Jack, like she shows different um, angles. Like, I love mm -hmm. this angle of just showing like the the choice of the rug and yeah. then like how you could live in this space. I think her photography really adds so much. Yeah, I really liked to, I don't know if you want to show the her process page. I really liked the photo that she chose for that. Yeah. Um, where you can see like the thought process behind um, you know, how she picks materials and, and looks at everything as a whole. I thought that was a really cool shot there. Yeah, yeah, so much goes into what she does. Um, it's kind of similar to like us as designers. Um, I mean, she like her process is so, so detailed. Um, I think a lot of people think, oh, you just pick furniture or pick a rug and make the space look pretty. And like, she considers so much, they, they have to consider like where the electrical is and yeah. how, how things are going to flow and like what the movement of the space needs to be. So it's not just about making things look pretty. There's a lot of technical knowledge that needs to go behind it. So, um, she's really good at making it look easy and making it just look so like seamless but in reality there's so much planning that that needed to go to make it look that way and make your house um you know truly livable um, yeah definitely yeah more than just the paint it's like all of the like you said the plumbing the electrical all of that has to be taken mm -hmm. into consideration yeah fergie says this is making me want to redecorate yay <laughs> Val loves the dark blue, of course. Umicorn loves the this shot here of the um, mood board or the... Don't yeah. Board. Yeah. Very cool. So yeah, everybody go and check out Jamie's uh, work. Looks like... Yep. Um, looks like you can maybe follow on... I think she had some social links at the bottom if you wanted to follow. Yeah. Below um yeah i see instagram facebook pinterest if you want to follow or we just go. check out the awesome website yeah yes. there you go you guys can follow her at jamie noggle interiors or her, her website which is just jamie noggle.com but yeah she's she's awesome all right we want to switch back over to your screen and finish up yeah. So let's kind of, um, maybe let's consider mocking up this investment guide and seeing how that might look. Sounds good. And do you typically keep your files kind of stored on Google drive like this or, um, your preferred... for, for like mockups yeah. or yeah. Um, these happen to be delivered this way, but gotcha. yeah, with clients, I send all of their files through Google drive just because, yeah. um, like there's, I don't get in trouble with, um, it being too big, <laughs> like the file right. size being too big. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's see. 
-hmm. And again, it kind of makes it easy for you to update things. Exactly. To, like send files back and forth. Yeah. So they have their own little um, space. Yeah. Their own little like account that I create for them. And then all their files are there. So everything's like in one spot. So it's easy to find stuff. Oops. So let's mock up what the investment guide could look like. Gotcha. And this would be, I guess, since you're putting it on a tablet, this could be something that they would uh, maybe download and, and have available for, um, you know, clients to, to look through. Yeah. On the tablet. Most, um, most of the formats that my clients, uh, most things that I'm creating for my clients are digital. So, I mean, they could definitely get this printed, but, um, in today's age, like it seems like, uh, you know, most clients are wanting these things to be digital and then, um, they just send it in a digital form through, um, I'm generally helping them set up like a CRM or yeah. like a, a workflow. And so they can, it's just like seamless process for them. Oh, that looks so nice. Yeah, oh. that's look, that looks like lovely on that. It just looks so like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, it just like, it's so different to see like how it looks in real life versus, um, I don't know what that guy is. Okay. Like a rotate tool, I think. Oh, okay. And I've hit and accidentally hit a keyboard shortcut. So, yeah, it's so different to see like how it looks in real life. And sometimes when you mock things up, it doesn't look as good as you think it would look. So then you have yep. more work to go yep. back and design. It happens. So, <laughs> Chris is asking, do you ever create PDF lookbooks? Yeah, actually, I am in the process of doing that for my fashion and interiors brand. So we're doing um, a lookbook for her 2022 fall collection. And um, she'll be sending that off to like her vendors and in order to get like them to sign on for her collections for future. So yeah, I mean, there's like a direct ROI to some of the work that we get to do. So it's, it's really fun. else as I was wondering to say that too Chris and Chris said great minds think alike <laughs> so now you're um are you exporting these out Same yeah out. so what I'm doing is I save these that I'm liking mm -hmm. and then what I would do is um more than likely like use these in the InDesign document that I'm presenting to the gotcha. client of all the final files so I just kind of like start stockpiling all these um, mock-ups and different like versions of their, their website or their brand, and then get them ready to put into a final document um, to send over to her. So, yeah. So what do you guys think of how it's looking so far? Do you have any questions or thoughts? Val is asking, do clients typically ask for lookbooks or is that something you suggest? Um, lookbooks is definitely something that the client asked for. Um, like investment guides are things that um, I recommend for clients just because it elevates their client process and it gives, um, it really helps increase their ROI and it really has like a direct impact on their bottom line. Um, so that's like something that I suggest doing, but, um, like it really depends on the client. So like the fashion and interiors brand, it makes sense that she would have a lookbook. Mm -hmm. And so she specifically requested when we had our initial like strategy call that that was something that she wanted me help with me for designing. So, yeah. Yeah. I guess as a follow up to that, are there typically, would you typically include things like that? Um, you know, upfront like suggestions about uh, different like brand assets or collateral that you might, you think might make sense for the brand? Yeah. So in our initial call, I really want to kind of understand where the brand is and what 
like they're like what's going to be the most meaningful to them mm -hmm. um because if their goal is like they need to make money right away then improving their client process is might be a better idea or might make more financial sense for them to choose to invest in right now than right. let's say an entire like website redesign mm -hmm. um, because they're gonna get a direct ROI. So I'm really like digging deep on our initial call to really kind of understand um, what's most meaningful to them. And then that's kind of how I guide those calls. It's like, okay, well, let's talk about this. And, um, and usually like, they they appreciate like my clients appreciate that they're like wow I didn't think of that and yeah um you know so yeah yeah they don't clients do have like you know a budget and so you have to consider what you know what mm -hmm. you decide to what direction you decide to go that kind of yeah stuff. yeah we want to make the most use of their budget and um make sure that the decisions that I'm making like and presenting to them are most impactful for them so like if they're getting a lot of clients through their website then of course it makes sense to like improve their website improve their um you know conversion rate on their website possibly create some um downloadable items for their website for them like just improve the entire flow um and like really design like the ui and the ux of their website so it, it totally like each client is totally different. They all have different needs. Um, and that's like what they they're asking me to do is to be the expert and kind of understand, um, their business where they're at and what, like how we can use what we do to really help them the most where they're at. And then like later on we can do other things, but you know, yeah. Val's letting everybody know we've got about 10 minutes left. So if anybody has any last minute questions, make sure that you ask them or comments or anything else. Uh, Val did have two questions um, while you kind of work on these final mock-ups here. Uh, <laughs> do you have any specific way you like to export your final assets? And what is the difference between a lookbook and an investment guide? Yes. So I, um, export, <laughs> exporting is like my least favorite thing, <laughs> but, but I, uh, export, um, like I kind of create a separate illustrator file and then I, um, put all of the versions of the website, including all the different color or not the website, all the different logo versions and all the assets. Um, so I'll do like the brand color, black, black, white, you know, all that, like the different versions. So it's like very organized and everything is in one file. So it's not crazy like this, like they don't have all these different things. And then um, I export them um, in PNG, SVG, um, JPEG and PDF. And so the client gets everything like clearly organized and then I like label all the artwork. It's like a whole process, oh, yeah. um, but, but everything is sent over to um, their Google file. So it's all like easily accessed and I do export in RGB and CMYK. Yeah. So, and then they have like an entire like logo, um, like file guide so that I created for them. So they know how to use each different version and when to use RGB, when to use CMYK, and yeah. like, kind of how to important. use the file. So <laughs> um, yeah, I also send that over with them because that can be confusing too. Yeah. So yeah. What was the other question? Oh, the difference the, between yeah. the investment. Um, a lookbook is more uh, fashion based or e-commerce based. So, um, for example, um, like my client that is a fashion and interiors brand, she wants a lookbook to present, um, her like upcoming season to potential investors. So it's a different type of guide than 
like an investment guide, which just has a different purpose. So they still need to be thoughtfully designed and they still need to be conversion focused. They're just a different objective. So, um, but it, an investment guide is really the purpose is to like beautifully display how much it costs to work with you mm -hmm. and like all the frequently asked questions around that and kind of answer those questions in a thoughtful way um, and kind of take people by the hand throughout the sales process. And then a lookbook is showing your like designs um, to people that would be interested in purchasing them. So like, um, let's say you have a, a beige sweater and some leather pants, generally like on an e-commerce site, you would sell those separately, but in a lookbook, you would combine them and like have them shot, um, through your brand photography that is on brand with the creative direction, um, together so that people can see and imagine how those two things can work and kind of see your vision for like how to put things together. So I don't know if that makes sense, but like generally high fashion, um, brands do lookbooks. You can even see like digital ones on their website if you go to them. So you can kind of get an idea for like how they imagine putting different pieces together. Yeah, no, I think that makes sense. Um, they serve different purposes, like you said. So mm -hmm. let us know if you guys still have questions about that. <laughs> Jack, you just like make everything I say like <laughs> sounds so much like you're like, okay, you just said that in three sentences. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> a little wordy. No, I think it, it's great. I, it's nice. I love hearing about your process and how you think things, <laughs> you know, through. Um, I just simplified what you said, you know, you yeah. were the one that said it. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just doing, um, like another possibility for either a website or a document, just doing some more fiddling around um, with some possibilities uh, with the time that we have left. Yeah, we might not get through this final one here, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm if sure, you that, like you said, you'll be able to see the final, you know, full brand um, once you finish it out here so yes everyone be sure to follow keep up with sarah on instagram and on her website and then i don't know do you do you have a behance i do yeah yeah i created behance. i have um a few projects up there so you guys can go check those out and let me know what you think if you follow me of course i will follow you back so love to uh, get some community on there. Maybe after you crop this photo here, you can give us kind of a walkthrough of what we went over today and, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. Um, yes, do this guy. Thanks, uh, Val, for sharing links to Sarah and my Behance. Very nice of you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Val. Yep. All right. So what we went over today was um, we decided on a direction. So the client decided that she liked this first version of the logo the best. So we doubled down on that and we wanted to explore um, some additional um, elements and created even a pattern and a crest um, to use throughout the brand so that we don't just have, um, we like, I don't like to just give the client um, singular um, logos, but we want to have more elements to really bring that brand to life. So we created this really beautiful, um, crest that was based on a photo that she had taken of a fireplace 
an antique fireplace in Charleston. And we created this other crest that she might use for a social media profile photo. And we also created this pattern of magnolias as well as a pattern based on the crest. And then we went and started having fun with creating some um, elements to bring her brand to life. So we created what could be the cover of an investment guide, um, the front page of, of her website, um, the front and back of her um, business card, a possible um, invitation or um, like social media announcement. And then um, we went ahead and started mocking these things up in Photoshop. So um, here's some of the items that we ended up mocking up. Here's her business card. And um, her All right. Logo. Yeah, thanks. Thanks everybody for hanging out and thanks Sarah for sharing your process. If you want to check out the rest of um, this, follow Sarah on Behance and her website. Uh, up next, we've got the XD Daily Creative Challenge Encore with Jesse Showalter. So stick around for that. Bye everyone. Bye guys. <laughs>